there happy people we are continuing to do our pastoral um our parenting sorry tips for families uh we're looking at ways that we can support you especially during this time when you may feel under pressure so we try to keep it short easily accessible and something that just gives you cause for reflect or maybe answers a question that you had not considered so one question i have is why do we touch our face so much seriously i find it amazing that since i've been told not to touch my face the only thing i can do is touch my face there's a psychology to this i know there is but that's not our tip for today our tip for today is about family traditions now what we have in our family um we try to find traditions that enhance who we are as a family and regulate our yearly cycle we had noticed that the israelite people had a really regulated year and how wonderful that was for them because it it meant that it it punctuated your faith experience and you were able to develop practices that kept you um, in touch with God, in touch with others and built the family community. And so we have tried that in our family and very famously, many people know this, we have a book tradition. Um, and so for the month of December, we every day we give a book uh, advent calendar so the children have time. It's a commitment from us to read with them as a family to read stories to read information to gather time with our children um and then at the christmas time and i know for the tradition the christian tradition i come from people find it really hard to hear their pastor say that she has a christmas tradition but i do um it involves books and we spend the first half of the day reading books getting new books enjoying each other's company with books and um, we try to spend time with each other doing that. So that has been our tradition and I'm very happy with it. It works. We've been building it for a number of years now and it's involved friends uh, who have contributed to our book traditions. But Easter is slightly different because Easter presents different challenges. Bunnies, rabbits, um, eggs, uh, chocolate, sweets. It's really overwhelming. Uh, quite unlike Christmas, which um, you can really control the amount of candy, etc. I know that sounds weird to say, but <laughs> much easier to do at Christmas than at Easter, where it seems like, in fact, the only thing you can find in the stores is anything related to Easter. It's all about spring, or it's about eggs, or it's about uh, bunnies. Uh, occasionally, a sheep makes an appearance. And so when you are a Christian and you are trying to focus on building your child's narrative towards a Christian narrative, finding stuff that's about Jesus can be really difficult. So I've taken to trying to avoid uh, too much chocolates and sweets and all of those types of things. Although I live in the Netherlands, it's almost impossible because they make the most gorgeous mini eggs here at Easter and they are so delicious. They are addictive. I eat them for like months because I absolutely adore them. So that's a little bit difficult to avoid. The chocolate aspect of it everyone knows i'm a chocoholic so hands up that's difficult but uh what i do try to do is find something meaningful to give the children and this year we for uh, the reason that every other family is having the same experience i had some time in my easter schedule which i do not normally have and we were able as a family to sit down and have a communion service and we read the scripture we read the story of Jesus from the part where he uh, took the communion to the crucifixion and to the risen empty grave so we read those three portions of the story we missed out the bits in between the children are familiar with the story so it was okay to do that um, in addition they had seen me on the kids show for the, the national program for our church and seen me do those three punctuated bits so they've heard it a few times in the last four days leading into this moment when we sat and I realized that it was just really nice to have a moment as a family to internally do communion and how important it is for us to develop family traditions that's that are actually about time and not about gifts and so, of course, we do the book tradition, which is, although a gift, actually about time and now developing this idea that we could potentially do communion as a family every Easter to punctuate our family time together with something concrete. And bearing in mind, that as children grow older, they think about moving away and doing different things. So it's really important to have 
family traditions that celebrate time and then coming back into your space with that time. And of course, people will say all the time, what you remember as an adult, what do I look back on my childhood and remember? And yes, I do remember the amazing toys I got. Don't let anyone tell you they don't. I had amazing, when I got an amazing toy, I remembered the amazing toy. So I do remember the gifts, but yes, I do have the overwhelming sense of the time that my mother spent with us and that gift that she gave us of spending time with us, investing in us. And I think that, you know, that overwhelming picture of what people remember isn't necessarily the gifts, although kids do. I remember my a la carte kitchen, thank you very much. My mum probably worked her bottom off. Um, to get an a la carte kitchen when I was a kid because we couldn't afford an a la carte kitchen um, So it was quite amazing that I got an a la carte kitchen Loved my a la carte kitchen for those of you that know have just worked out how old I am based on the fact that I got an a la carte kitchen um, Yeah, so you know, it's important I think that we have family traditions That celebrate us as a family and for those of you from traditions that that do celebrate the Christmas and Easter tradition. So if you're from a faith background that does celebrate the Christmas and Easter tradition, you know, that's something you can cherish. For those of you who are from faith backgrounds like myself that do not celebrate the Christmas and Easter tradition, um, it's something that you can make really meaningful for your family in a different way than you would if you were following um, a tradition that does celebrate it. And for those of you that don't and just enjoy the chocolate and Easter, chocolate, eggs and Easter bunnies which are very cute and lovely um, then of course there are ways of making these things meaningful that you spend quality time together and finding traditions that mean something to your family and it's not something that you have to think long and hard about what can I do oh my gosh it's not going to look like this person's I have to make all these decorations find something that you actually like that you enjoy and that you can spend the time with the child that's the most important tradition that's the most important part of the tradition that we come together and we spend time together. That's the thing that they that they love. So that's what I wanted to say about tip for the day and really thinking about family traditions and how we can keep those up during the time of quarantine or how we can even make new family traditions that may last outside of the quarantine, something positive that will come out. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. I hope that... For you as this time continues you can think about things that you've cherished about this time and think positively how to make traditions for your family that encourage you to spend time with one another god bless and see you soon bye bye